Now that we know our audio interface, we're ready to get it to work with Ableton Live. If you have an instrument or microphone handy, have it ready. We'll start by turning the gain on our interface down to zero and plugging our microphone or instrument into input one. Now let's go into Ableton Live. When you've plugged in your microphone or instrument, you start by making sure Live is using your audio interface. You do this by going into Preferences. And like most Mac applications, you can find preferences using the keyboard shortcut Command, comma, or Windows Control, comma. Alternatively, you can go to the menu bar, click Live or Options in, on Windows, and select Preferences. The Preferences window will pop up, and on the left, you have several tabs with headings. Click Audio. At the top, there's the subheading Audio Device. This is where you get Live to talk to our interface. First, we have the driver type. On Mac, click the drop down menu and select Core Audio. On Windows, it might vary, but usually you'll be able to select ASIO. Below that, you'll see Audio Input Device, and its drop down menu will have a range of options reflecting the possible audio inputs that Live can receive. They can include your computer's built in microphone or sound card inputs, whatever interfaces you have connected, as well as the No Device option. Click on the name of your interface. You also need to make sure that you have your inputs enabled in the input config menu. If you're inputting to input three and four, for example, make sure that they are enabled. It's the same for the audio output device menu. We want to select the name of our interface and where we're outputting audio to. The audio output device settings are very important. If your computer isn't making sound when playing with live, this should be the first place you check. To test that sound is coming out of live, we can play a test tone. The test tone switch is at the bottom of the audio pane in preferences. This will play a single, pure note until you turn it off. If you've got your interface set up correctly and outputting to some speakers or headphones, you should hear this note coming out of your interface. This will play quietly and after a while you'll get used to adjusting your output settings to get the right reference volume level for working consistently between different speaker and monitor setups. Close your preferences when you're done. Now that we know Live is using our audio interface, we want to make sure that our audio tracks are listening to the interface. On the right side of the screen you'll see a little I.O. button. Click that and you'll see the In-Out section on all of your tracks. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts Command Option I on Mac and Control Alt I on Windows. Go to your first audio track. The In Out section is divided into three parts Audio From, Monitor, and Audio To. Audio From tells us where the track will listen for audio. We want this track to listen to audio from input 1 on our audio interface. Click the first drop down menu. Select X in on the drop down menu below that. Select 1 i.e. input 1. You'll notice there's a black bar next to the number 1. This is a small meter that tells us how loud the input sound is. Talk into your microphone or play your instrument and slowly turn the gain up on your interface and that should light up partially green. There shouldn't be any sound from your microphone coming out of your speakers or headphones. Before continuing, turn your speakers down or switch to headphones. Otherwise your microphone and speakers might feed back. At the bottom of the track, there is a button with a black circle in it. This is the record arm button. We press this button to tell Live we are ready to record this track. You still won't hear any sound from your microphone though. If you talk into the microphone, you'll see that the meter is moving up and down, but it's gray. The monitor heading describes the way we hear the input that the track is listening to. When it's set to off, we don't hear it at all. When it's set to in, we always hear it no matter what, which is useful when we need a constant input with switching on or off. When you are first starting, however, it's best to set the monitoring to auto. We hear it whenever we have the track record armed. Set it to auto, and there you go. I can hear my voice in my headphones, and Live is receiving my sound. So now we've got sound into Live via our audio interface, which opens our sound up to an incredible wealth of possibilities. In the next section, we're going to talk about microphones and what microphone you need for your instrument.